In today's show, Neil O'Shea has been dismissed as the Blazers president of basketball operations. What's next for Portland now missing the architect of this roster for the last 10 years? Welcome to Lockdown Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? To pass first point guard and Trailblazer reporter Mike Richmond, you're listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Available wherever you get podcasts and now also on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet and you're listening, go ahead and do it. Pause the show or if you're listening on YouTube, smash that button right, right there below the video. But if you're, if, you're listening, if you're a podcast listener and you haven't subscribed on YouTube yet, do me a favor. Go do it right now. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers by 2022. We're up towards 1,400, maybe a little above that now. And we cannot get there without your help. So go ahead and and uh, go ahead and subscribe to the show. Help us help us reach our goal. Help me reach my goal. But you'll be a part of it. Be a part of the community. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel now. Today's show is big old news. Neil Olshay is gone, 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 gone. Fired this morning, Friday, December 3rd, after 10 years at the helm as the Blazers GM and then president of basketball operations when he gave himself a title change. Um, we got to unpack all of that. That's that's what we're going to do today. Let me take you a little bit inside the show and then we'll and then we'll get into the Olshay news. Uh, I was, we were going to record a show as promised with Jason Quick today. And I had Jason on here. He was, we were on the call and he said, oh, Oh, well, it was a swear word, but oh no, uh, like uh, they fired Neil. Gotta go. See ya. And so, um, no Jason today. He was supposed to be on here, but this news, um, I don't know if it came as a big surprise, but the timing certainly wasn't, um, it wasn't what Blazers senior reporter Jason Quick and myself thought it might be. Um, Neil's been on the rocks for, for closing in on five weeks. Uh, the Blazers launched an investigation that he had created a hostile work environment, a toxic workplace environment with his, um, you know, verbal abuse and berating of employees and just um, in, in general, just a, um, a unsavory and, and like I said, hostile work environments within the Portland Trailblazers. And he was under investigation uh, by the team. They hired a, uh, an outside law firm to investigate it. They hired um, to investigate the situation. They talked to current and former employees. They talked to current players. Um, according to Jason Quick, uh, Jason was supposed to be on here, gives the inside news. But according to Jason, um, they had interviewed over 60 people and had expanded the search from there like it was uh you know, it was getting, it had gone and it had gotten pretty large, but also they had just, it had gone quiet for three weeks. Like we just hadn't heard anything. Um, so now after that three weeks is done, it was, it was, uh, announced today by the team that Olshe is out, gone, gone, gone. And that Joe Cronin, uh, play, previous director of player personnel will be promoted to, um, interim GM. However, uh, it does not sound like Cronin will be promoted to the big chair permanently. Um, it's it, it sounds like at least from the reporting that Jason Quick even said this on the podcast. So I'm not um, this isn't like something he shared with me in private. This is like he said it here. If you're a long time listener, make sure you listen to the Jason Quick episodes. They're always so good. He's the, been covering the routine longer and better than anyone else. But um, that the Blazers, if they were to move, move on from Neil Olshay, would hi go outside of the of the uh, team to hire someone else, and it sounds like they're going to do that. According to Jake Fisher, uh, reporter for Sports Illustrated, the the Blazers have already considered some uh, some outside candidates, including Brent Berry of the Spurs and Tayshawn Prince, uh, former Chauncey Billups teammate with the Pistons in the early two thousands. Um, so, regardless of it's Brent Berry or um, or Tayshawn Prince, uh, it's it's not going to be Joe Cronin for very long. Like the Blazers are going to, they they want someone who can push this, push this thing forward, right? Like, um, not that hiring Tayshaun Prince, who hasn't, um, you know, run a basketball team is like this. I don't know. You're not getting this like super value of, of connections in the league and long time, um, you know, long, long time experience and all that and, and expertise. Um, but you're, like they want to hire someone who can they can give the job to for a long period of time um and it sounds like they don't they want that to be outside they want to start a new era and i think that's kind of what this is is like the air the new era of portland trailblazers basketball started when they fired terry stotts um you know for nine seasons at the helm stotts it was stotts and dame and olshay and now the last person left standing is just dame because 
Stotts left in June or July, uh, June, I believe, and Olshea out here in December. Now, this is a little bit messier than you would want the way for Neil Olshea to have his tenure end. Um, I don't think he's done a, a, an a awesome job by any means with this team, but there's there's a lot of hyperbole around like sort of the level and quality of of sort of roster construction that Olshay's done. He he's been a, he's been pretty good at it. He screwed up the 2017 draft pretty royally. Um, <laughs> you know he's he screwed up the summer of 2016 pretty royally, and he gave in the summer of 2019 when he gave uh, Stotts and himself and uh, or negotiated himself and and gave. CJ McCollum, a contract extension, that looks like a pretty big screw up, right? Like there's been some missteps, but um, he's built a team that's been consistently competitive and pretty good. Like he's, he's kind of, he's kind of fine at it. And I've said this to other, to people, and I've mentioned on the show before, like people around the league kind of think Neil, she's fine at his job. They understand that he's prickly, but, and I'm not, I don't mean to suggest that I'm like super plugged in, but I know a handful of people who work outside of the trailblazers around the league and all of them um, have a, certainly a level of respect for Olshay as like a basketball mind um so i don't like I, I know there's a lot of hyperbole around like neil's an idiot and he screwed up and sure this this team is not very good um but neil's biggest weakness is is press conferences um he just doesn't know he didn't know how to um he he, he never had the humility to be the the right type of leader for a basketball team and apparently behind the scenes he was um you know berated people and was pretty um a pretty brutal to work with and that ended up costing him his job just like from a personal standpoint like yeah neil is prickly and kind of um acerbic and like can be can be really difficult to deal with um and the blazers found that th that sort of outward personality that forward-facing personality that you've seen if you watch his press conferences exists in sort of the private world of the blazers and exists behind closed doors and within the office and all these things and they decide it's time to move on. Um, why I'm kind of, I'm not like trying to defend Neil's record. Like you can look at the roster right now and know that it's not in a great spot. Um, kind of fine, but not really where they want to be for, um, you know, they thought they were going to be really good this year and they're not quite there. Some of that is Damon Lord's health, um, et cetera, et cetera. But some of that is like no forwards. <laughs> they, just don't have, they just don't have enough dudes who are taller than six foot eight on the roster who can play the three and the four. Um, so like, I think there's some real shortcomings, some obvious shortcomings from Neil Olshay. I think he's, I think in general, his tenure was like mostly marked by success, but now he's gone and he's probably rightfully gone based on what we understand. And now the Blazers have to move forward. And what I want to talk about in the second segment is how do they move forward? What, what are the challenges that face whoever is next, whether it be Joe Cronin or someone hired outside, um, hired from outside the organization. And like, what, what did they need to do to get a team that's now 11 and 12 and just lost by 30 points? at home to the San Antonio Spurs what do they need to do to get this team back towards like truly competitive in the west as opposed to just like mediocre and having Damian Lillard on the roster so that's what we'll do in the second segment but first let me tell you about True Bill. it's the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need you don't want or you simply forgot about on average people save up to $720 with True Bill. that's a whole bunch of cash that you could save and that's look Companies make subscriptions hard to cancel, so Truebill makes it incredibly simple. They're cut, they, they are the middleman, but they make it so you don't have to do the work. All you do is link your accounts to Truebill, it'll cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap, and, and if, you, if it's harder than one tap, you, you're paying for a service. Truebill, a Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Um, I've used Truebill just to get sort of my eyeballs, just to get all on one page, all the subscriptions I have. Um, I am, you know, I am a mid-range millennial with who pays for a bunch of digital subscriptions. I wanted to like see them all in one space to kind of get a, get a sense of of you know how much money I was paying for all my digital subscriptions. And from the time I downloaded the app to the time I was looking at all my subscriptions, it probably took less than ten minutes, probably six or eight minutes. Um, it's fast, it's easy, and it happened. It, it was super simple. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at truebill.com slash locked on MBA. Go right now. Truebill.com slash locked on MBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. All right. So Neil Olshay's gone. Uh, Q Brian Wheeler saying it's a great day to be a Blazer fan. Actually, I, I do think there are some Blazer fans out there who kind of think Neil's good and miss him or will miss him. Um, I, I probably wouldn't. I think he's been fine, but like 
the the roster is so is so stale and so stagnant. Like, I don't think you could make a compelling case right now as we sit here today on December third that that Neil has done a good job over the last three years. He he's maybe been fine. Like maybe he hasn't been detrimental to this team. And maybe you think that uh, Nizir Little and Amphrey Simons are going to pop and like end up end up being like real gems and all these things. Like, um, you know, and and be really valuable, but where they are with like a really difficult path to improve and like pretty much mired in mediocrity. Like they're going to, I think they're going to end up making the playoffs. I think they're going to be a solid low level playoff team. I've been saying all year, I think they finished sixth in the West. They're kind of trending below that now, but I think once Dame's healthy, they're, they're still going to push for sixth, seventh in the West, maybe just avoid the play in round, maybe end up in the play in round and try to sneak out of it. Um, but the goal isn't for them to be consistently okay, right? Like this is, the, they have the longest active playoff streak in the league, but it's kind of meaningless because even the one year they made the Western Conference Finals, they were summarily dispatched by the Warriors. They were, um, you know, swept in four games and the end of that series, the Warriors were shorthanded too. Like when they've gone up against the elite teams, they've been proven that they are not that. Olshay has failed to build with, you know, one of the best players in the history of the franchise, one of the 10 best players in the league. Um, to build from from consistently good to great. He has not been able to take that step. And whoever takes over next, that's the challenge for them. This team is kind of fine. Um, like I said, like I, I kind of like the roster has some obvious holes. Like they do not have enough people who can play three and who can play four with any consistency. Um, Nazir Little has shown flashes, but is still kind of a, um, a young guy who makes a bunch of mistakes on defense. Uh, Robert Covington has taken a really big step back this year. I don't know if that's the problem with the front office, but it is what it is when you don't have options behind him. Tony Snell is a minimum guy who plays like a minimum, minimum guy. Like he's he's um, he can you can patch holes, but he is not um, a game changer by any means. And then you just like don't have a lot of threes and fours behind it. Uh, Chauncey Billups has not wanted to play Larry Nance at the four, really. He sees him mostly as a five. That's probably legitimate good call. But like that means the roster is a little bit wonky. You also have this like all these small guards. Uh, you, the Blazers' four best offensive players are four gentlemen under six foot three. Damon Lord, CJ McCollum, Norman Powell, and Anthony Simons. There were times this year when Chauncey Billups said, okay, I'm going to play all four of them together, but that's untenable. You can't play four, six foot three guys unless they're all wired like Alex Caruso or something like uh, Gary Payton too. Like they're like, you know, crazy good athletes who are incredibly strong and, and can like change the change the floor kind of vertically and with wild athleticism. That's not any of the guys they have on the roster. They have some buckets in like a lot of, they have a lot of dudes who are buckets, smoke face emoji, but they don't have like, they don't have the versatility to compete at the highest level. So, Here's here's where we've landed. Whoever has this job next still is left with this roster. It isn't fixed overnight by getting Neil Olshay up out the paint. For many of you, getting Neil Olshay up out the paint is probably a win in, a, in and of itself, but the, the challenges still remain. So let's, and we've highlighted them a bunch here, but let's like kind of outline them because I think it's valuable in thinking about whoever is next, here are all the things they'll have to overcome or deal with. One, I think the Damon CJ experiments has kind of run its course in terms of like, how good can you be? I think you can be kind of fine. Like if the goal is to be the fifth or sixth best team in the Western conference, I think you can build around those two dudes and be that. But I, I think, especially with Norman Powell and Amphrey Simons on the roster, I think you've kind of seen what, um, what all of the juice you can squeeze out of that, out of that pairing. Like you've, you, you really, you've really kind of, um, you kind of maximize what you can get out of it. And the last time that they got as far, you know, when they got to the Washington Conference Finals in, in 2019, they just had a, way more size. E you know, even Evan Turner was 6'7", and they had Mo Harkless and Alfred Camino and Rodney Hood, who's, who's big, it's, you know, 6'8". Um, they had Zach Collins who could play the four. They could play really, you know, they're just bigger. They were just bigger. And they're not, they don't have that size anymore. Um, they It's like they didn't learn the lessons from the sort of lengthy wings thing. So probably the next task of whoever is, of 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 whoever takes control, whether it be Joe Cronin who makes these moves, or in my guess, if they are going to hire someone from outside, they would rather hold off on big trades until they hire that new GM and then um, and then let them kind of craft this craft this team. I think one of the problems with Neil Olshay being in flux was like this team needs a shakeup. Like they're a mess. They lost by thirty points at home to the Spurs last night. They didn't play particularly hard in the first quarter of that game. Um, so then. 
uh, you know, it's like you, you this team needs like an inf like an influx of something new, some new, just some new, new blood, new, new something, newness, period. Um, and the way to sort of the newness is, is almost certainly like the best way to move forward with the newness is to trade uh, CJ McCollum, right? Like he's your, he's, he's kind of the thing that's the, the, he's the most replaceable good player on the roster, right? You slide Norman Powell down there, you bump up Amphrey Simons minutes and you get something else. But CJ McCollum is not easy to trade. $100 million, $100 million contract extension, pay, getting paid max money. And he's just not, he has not been an all-star um, this in his career. And he hasn't really sniffed an all-star game. It's not like I said this before. It's like, he hasn't had an all-star snub, like a campaign where you're like, well, he deserved to make the all-star team, but you, he couldn't because, um, you know, whatever. Mike Conley stole a spot with the Jazz. Like it was, no, he just, he's, what he is, is he's a long time, <laughs> long time bucket, but like, um, he's the Blazers' second best player. So if they trade him out, they kind of need someone to be able to fill in that role or fill in the fill in enough versatility to make up for that role on the other end. But other teams probably don't value CJ like that. Um, he's not an easy he's not easy to trade. Um, if you're looking to trade the expiring contracts like Robert Covington and Yusuf Nurkic, like um, Yusuf Nurkic is pretty good, but he's like an above average center in the NBA entering um, his entering free agency. So if you're trading for him, you're trading for the right to pay Yusuf Nurkic. I think that really lowers the list of, su of possible suitors. One, because I just think centers in general, like not even speaking on Nurk's ability, but like the position he plays in general has been um, devalued a little bit. Like people don't want to pay big money for centers because um, t teams go smaller. And if you like, you know, versatility and perimeter defense is it's just much more valuable than, um, than being like a big bruiser inside. So like, I don't think Nurk has like a huge, a huge market to be traded. Not that Nurk is like a, has been a problem, but if, if you're looking to upgrade the roster that, and, and he's entering free agency, like it makes sense. Same with Robert Covington. Um, Rocco was, good as recently as last year but he struggled a lot this year um and i wonder what sort of his general trade value is on the open market like whoever takes over is still saddled with all these issues uh empty simon's entering free agency this summer so it's like you you probably can't pay ant this summer if cj and norm are still on the roster so you've got to move one of them because you can really only have three small guards. You'd rather just have two. But if Simons is ready to be like a, a if Simons is comfortable with being a well-paid and forever six man, if you trade one of Norman and CJ, you get, you know, Dame, Ant, and whoever else um, stays, like you're, you're in an okay spot. If you could trade Rocco for a, for maybe multiple forwards to kind of fill out, fill out the roster and add some versatility, that's okay. If you can trade... Uh, Yusuf Nurkic and get back like a reasonably good center in return plus something else. You're okay, but all of those things are difficult needles to thread. Um, I'm just kind of running through this because I, I think Neil put them in a difficult spot where they can they have a path if just just better health. Like if Dame gets back and gets healthy, they have a path to be okay and be a playoff team again and be competitive. But if the goal is to win a championship and to make Damian Lord. Um, make Dame happy and all these things like by getting him a title um, or getting him close to like reasonably close to a title in, in a way that he's like, well, hey, it happens like f basketball's hard. I don't think I could do it with this group. And so like big structural changes have to come. And can the next considering what's on the roster now, can who whomever they hire thread that needle and make those big structural changes? Speaking of Damian Lord. I would argue he's now the most powerful person in the Blazers, the Blazers organization. Let's talk about that to close the show. But first, let's talk about Bill Bar, the best tasting protein bar that there is. Um, they're not messing around. They're making delicious protein bars. Uh, I've been eating Bill Bars for a couple of years. I've been telling you about Bill Bars for a couple of years. Listen, um, let me let me take you inside. When I first started doing this, Bill Bar becomes a sponsor. They send me a free box of Bill Bars. It's great. I really appreciate it. I ate them, finished the box, and then I started spending my own money to get my own Bill Bars because I love the way they taste. Um, they got that sort of candy bar-like texture. They're covered in 100% chocolate. They, they, you know, kind of pick your blood sugar up in the middle of the day if you need something. But they also pack a punch, 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and no more than 5 grams of net carbs. Like, they're, they're tasty and they're healthy. And they come in a whole bunch of different flavors with new limited time flavors all the time so make sure you're checking built.com you will find something you like you'll find something your family likes and then you can order more from there so 
go to build.com right now. Use that promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your next order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Still a pass first point guard. Still Mike Richmond. You're still listening to Locked on Blazers. Neil Olshay is gone, 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 gone. They got him up out the paint. Fired this morning, or as the Blazers used in their official press release, dismissed. He's gone. Joe Cronin is now your interim GM, and the Blazers will likely search for another candidate outside of that. We talked about um, sort of, I I think Neil's, like, we, we kind of talked about Neil's legacy a little bit, and I think his legacy is like, built a competitive team incapable of making the next step in part because of his own stubbornness. Um, and he screwed up a couple off seasons to put him in this hole. Now that hole is inherited. There's like the challenges are inherited by whoever's next, whether that's uh, Joe Cronin or whoever they hire outside of the, uh, uh, outside of the organization, like the, 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 the solution you know, step one, fire Olshay. Step two, someone else has to fix this. And I don't think there's an easy way. um, Like, I don't think it's very hard for the Blazers to be kind of good again, but like championship level good. I think they're, I think they're, I think it's difficult for them to get all the way to championship level good. Um, you know, I've, I, I think I've been consistent in saying, I, I think they're a low, like a low level non-home court playoff team. And I think the path to get there is very simple. Healthy Damon Lord gets you there, but the next step, good to great is very difficult. And speaking of Damian Lord, I would argue he's the most powerful person in the organization right now because all of this hinges on what Dame wants to do. And whether you like it or not, stars control this league and stars and their agents control this league. Um, they, they can, they can strong arm you. They can push you around and they can get what they want. Um, not that I, I, not that I'm saying like Dame wanted Neil out or whatever, but like if Dame wants them to take the next step, um, and, and I think he was pretty clear, like, are we going to go for it or what this summer? Um, it, it just follows that this seems like Neil wasn't going to go for it or what he was content with, like making moves around the margins and saying like, Larry Nance, Cody Zeller, Tony Snell is pretty good. We'll just, we'll run back the same team. Like I believe in this group, we're going to be pretty good. And if Dame wants to win a title or compete for a title, like they're going to need to take big structural swings. And that means trading his friends. CJ McCollum and, and Yusuf Nurkic probably, or at least probably trading um, his friend CJ McCollum. I don't, I think it's overblown. I think I've seen other people say like, they won't trade CJ because Dame and him are good friends. I don't think that's true. I didn't, that is not my read on the situation. Um, I think they're adults and they know that the sort of, um, there's a business part of the situation and that that would happen independent of their friendship and they'd maintain a friendship beyond, um, regardless. <laughs> like, um, But I think Damon Lode is the most powerful person in the organization because he flirted with asking out last summer um he depending on sort of how you read the tea leaves or or your opinion of a report from henry abbott like he either like outwardly publicly considered it when he said i have um i haven't decided what my future will be or behind the scenes he was darn close to asking for a uh asking for a trade and and i think he was contemplating what his future would be and then he decided to come back um and now they find themselves in this position, but he will be right back there next summer with the ability to kind of strong arm them, strong arm them and, and, and flex his muscle and say, listen, I'm one of, I mean, he's, he's struggling a little bit this year, so it maybe changes the calculation a little bit, but like, I'm one of the best players in the league. I'm one of the best players in the history of the franchise. I've been the face of the franchise for a decade. You do these things to make me happy or I ask to leave. I think he's the most powerful person in the organization. I think him and the Goodwin representation, um, Aaron Goodwin his, 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 and the Goodwin firm, his, his uh, agents, I think they're the most powerful people in the organization. Um, I don't think this is like a full-on LeBron clutch sports Lakers situation, but I think it's damn close. Like I, I really, really do think that... Um, with this sort of power vacuum at the top, Dame's wishes will be absolutely the 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 top 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 of the list of, of of how this works. Now he's always had say. Like Carmelo Anthony was his guy, Hassan Whiteside was his guy. Those were basically Dame decisions. Um, so it's not like he's never had say in the past. But um, I think going forward, Damian Lord will will have absolutely a just a ton of. Um, power in deciding what comes next for this franchise. He, you could argue that that's totally reasonable and right because um, he's it, it's a stars league, like it's a talent league. Um, if you do not have one of the ten best players in the league, you can you probably can't win a championship. Like you straight up can't win a championship. I'll just put it there. Um, 
you probably need two of the top 20 players in the league plus others. You might need two of the t- higher than that. But like, you know, you look at the Bucks, right? Like, I don't know what your opinion of Chris Middleton and, and Drew Holiday is, but like they have one of the three best players in the league in Giannis Antetokounmpo and then like incredible complimentary parts. So like, and if you don't have that, if you don't hit that, look, the, the Suns the same way, like Booker and and uh, um, and CP, some, two of the top 20 players in the league and then Aiton and Mikhail Bridges, like really nice complimentary parts. Like if you don't have a bunch of top end talent, you're not competitive in this league. And if Dame decides to leave, the Blazers are a lottery team and like a bad one quickly. And if he asks out, it ushers in not just a new era, but like, a, probably a, a good long time wandering in the the lottery desert. Um, and it's hard to climb out of there if you're a non-glamour market. Like um, as, as much as we think that, or some people think that, uh, that Sam Presti in Oklahoma City has this like sort of a brilliant vision. Like they lost a game by 73 points last night. And that's, I'm mostly using that as a joke, but like it's a, it is a long dark road once you lose um, one of the, one of the top players in the league. And I think Dame can flex his muscle and absolutely put a organization that's um, that's in flux an organization that's, that's had a really messy few months and now had to fire their um, top decision maker just because, or not just because, but because he was, uh, you know, create a hostile work environment and, and, and had investigated for more than a month before pulling the trigger and, and firing him, you know, like an expansive, an expansive investigation into the culture created under Neil Olshay that led to his ouster because of all of that. There's this, there is just, um, there's a, a vacuum of power and there is a, the desperation to either, to continue to push this team in, in a certain direction. And I think Dame's wishes, Dame's choices, what Dame wants is he's, I think he's the most powerful person in the organization. Um, you know, I, I think yesterday he was the second most powerful person in the organization, quite frankly. Uh, obviously, Jody Allen has some say and some final and, you know, signs off on all the biggest decisions, but um those biggest decisions, I think now more than ever will be dictated by the wishes of Damien Lillard. I think he will, you know, he's someone who was co- contemplating what his future will be. And if he wants his future to be here, he's going to get to be the architect or at least one of the main decision makers, the loudest voices in, in whatever comes next for this group. This was supposed to be a show about how the Blazers lost to the Spurs. Um, like I said, Jason Quick was supposed to be here, but instead... It was about Neil Olshay, the new era. The, the the era ended in July or ended yeah in June, and now it, it continues in December. We've where we are pushing forward a new era of Blazers basketball. No Stotts gone, Olshay gone, Dame the last one left of the triumvirate that's been together since 2012. Whatever comes next for the Blazers is is, is a challenge, right? Um, I th- step one, step one, you fire Neil Olshay. Step two, you fix the roster. Whoof. I don't know what step three is just yet. A profit, I guess. Um, but I think you've maybe checked one box in your how to kind of settle the situation. Um, the 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 less sort of toxicity of both whatever Neil was like behind the scenes creating that culture with the organization and just the waiting game. Now that's out the door. Now the now a truly difficult part happens. How do you fix this? How how can you upgrade the roster that's kind of hamstrung itself with not a lot of tradable parts and limited first round picks? And how do you acquiesce your star so you can maintain your level of competitiveness? How do you stay where you want to be? It's all very challenging. This was step one. Steps two and beyond are from here on out. So make sure you listen to this podcast. Uh, we'll get Jason Quick on next week. <laughs> because we had, we lost him. We were literally on the call for two and a half minutes before the news broke. So no Jason this week as promised, but we'll get him on next week. Uh, we'll have recaps of, of Blazer games. They play the Boston Celtics on Saturday. So look for a, look for a show discussing that and sort of whatever's next uh, in your feed on Sundays. Uh, this is free in five days a week. So make sure it's your first listen every day. There's no other daily Trailblazers podcast out there. So if you want to stay abreast of what's happening with the team, this is the place to do it. So do me two favors. One, tell your friends about this podcast. The best way to grow a podcast is by word of mouth. You, you, dear listener, you help. You tell a friend, I like this podcast. That's how people find podcasts is that their friends who have shared interests, tell them about it. Um, that is that is the way it works. So do me a favor, be, be, be that advertising arm. Tell your friends about this podcast. Tell them they can find it wherever they get podcasts. And two, go subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're going to get to 2,000 subscribers by 2022. Cannot do it without your help. So if you're listening, if you're this deep into the episode, go to YouTube right now and subscribe. Appreciate you listening. 
Talk to you soon.